my third take, my camera keeps shutting off. I apologize. We're going to watch this video of Sheik Uthman essentially trying to confuse this supposed Christian, Christian preacher. Um, I forgot I even commented on this video a while ago, but somebody responded to my comment basically saying, "We're I'm a hypocrite. You know, reference the Bible that refutes what Sheik Uthman is saying. Okay, so let's. It's already halfway through. Let's. And if a man beats his male or female servant with a rod so that he dies under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Notwithstanding, if he remains alive a day or two, he shall not be punished, for he is his property. So, do you believe that if somebody has a slave, even a woman, and he beats her with a rod, as long as she lives a day and then dies in ER, critical, whatever, you have no punishment because she was your property. That's God's law. And he who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. So do you believe that's the law of Jesus? That if somebody curses their parents, they should be killed? Notice he said, do you believe that is the law of Jesus? Yeah. That is, in the, law, that is the law of Moses from the law of God. The guy corrects him. It's the law of Moses from the law of God. God, yes. From the law of Jesus. The law of God. From the law of Jesus. Yeah. Well, you said Jesus is God. Yeah. So Jesus ordained that if you curse your parents, you should be killed. Okay. Notice how he's kind of running this guy in circles. It's the law of Jesus. Jesus is God. Blah, blah, blah. The guy corrects him and he still kind of, you know, removes that thought from that guy's head, essentially. Excuse me. So. What Sheik Uthman is doing is basically proofreading certain texts from the Bible, trying to make it sound like something it's not. You know, if you're familiar with this guy, he kind of does this a lot, unfortunately. And this is not to belittle Sheik Uthman or attack him. I'm going to try to be as gentle and as factual as possible. And of course, like I said in my last video, if I'm wrong, correct me. I'm open to correction. Correct me. But do it factually, not imposing your feelings and emotions into scripture or into your Quran or wherever you're coming from. Um, so let's just get into it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. We got to preface kind of what's going on here, right? So Genesis is Genesis 3 is the serpent talking to Eve, contorting God's word to make Eve believe something else basically being deceitful. So verse 15, and I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. If we know how crucifixion works, if you're familiar with it, you know when Jesus was crucified through the hands, through the heel bone. It's kind of common knowledge now. There's a bunch of archaeological evidence uh, for how crucifixions were carried out. Okay. With that being said, let's go over to what he's referencing. So I believe it's chapter Exodus chapter 21, verse 17. Anyone who dishonors father or mother must be put to death. And chapter 15, uh, excuse me, verse 15. Anyone who strikes father or mother must be put to death. Cool. Clear as day right there. That's what's supposed to happen. But if you look at the heading, cases of personal injury. And then the heading at the very beginning of the chapter, fair treatment of slaves. He's trying to push this narrative that the Bible is like just treating people horrendously with no repercussions that, you know, why would God allow this? This is what God is doing to people, etc., etc., which that's not the case. You can read it for yourselves. Exodus chapter 21. It literally says in, in the second verse, if you buy a Hebrew slave, he may serve for no more than six years. Already you have a time frame set. Set him free in the seventh year and he will owe you nothing for his freedom. If he was single when he became your slave, he shall leave single. But if he was married before he became a slave, then his wife must be freed with him. There's a lot of other stuff that you know goes into this. You can read it for yourself, but for time's sake and subject matter of the video, 
um, we're going to kind of bounce around a little bit, so bear with me. So, what we know of slavery in the Bible, there's, you know, two main forms of slavery. Prisoners of war and economical reasons, debts owed and stuff like that. So, in relation to how we understand it today, you go take a loan out from the bank, you don't pay that loan. Somehow, some way, they're going to try to get their money. Um, same as borrowing livestock. If you're getting caught, if you get uh, caught in a war and you get taken as a slave, you're not just taken and beaten relentlessly and treated horribly. Not saying that that hasn't happened, um, but there's clear standards that are supposed to be upheld in these kinds of situations given to Moses from God to then relay to the people of the land. Okay. So prisoners of war, debts owed. Now, it goes into all these injuries and, and who causes what and what happens when these things are caused. It literally says, kidnappers must be put to death whether they are caught in possession of their victims or have already sold them as slaves. Now, this is kind of going to say, you can't just go into a village, into a town, and take somebody as you please. That's, that's not okay. That's not allowed. Now. Going back to the video, let's watch it a little bit. Yes. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm just trying to get your belief, bro. Slave, slave girl. Uh, just trying to get your belief, bro. So he's running them in these circles, trying to catch them up, confuse him, and then go, no, no, I'm genuinely just trying to understand how you understand the Bible. I got you. And I think it's kind of fair to say, I don't know who this guy is that he's talking to, but it, it seems like, on at least on the fly, He's not as knowledgeable and stern to kind of put this guy in his place and take him away um, from these confusing tactics. And if a man beats his male or female servant with a rod so that he dies under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Notwithstanding, if he remains alive a day or two, he shall not be punished for he is his property. Okay, so I believe he's referencing Exodus 21-23. No. Okay, 2121. But if the slave recovers within a day or two, then the owner shall not be punished since the slave is his property. We already know how these people were acquired. Debts owed, economic reasons, prisoners of war. We already know, verse 16, you couldn't just kidnap somebody because you felt like it. That is not the purpose of the law of Moses and the substance behind the message, right? So then we get into the whole thing where he says, well, Jesus is God, right? Jesus ordained this as if he's saying Jesus is the one who implemented these rules. Now, you can argue the fact that prior to Jesus being born, yes, obviously. But in the physical realm, because this is kind of what he's referencing, is the physical realm. Chronologically, we know Moses was before Jesus in the physical realm. Okay? So Moses is before Jesus. That means the revelation was given to Moses. The words and the rules were given to Moses from God prior to Jesus being born. So with that, Jesus did not ordain horrendous, you know, horrendous tactics, horrendous, you know, malicious intent of this stuff, right? It was strictly for the two reasons we already discussed. Now, 
if we go over to James 2.10, now this is, we're going to preference, preface, excuse me, we're going to preface kind of the purpose, one of the purposes of Jesus, you know, God taking up the flesh in the form of a servant um, and starting his ministry. James 2.10, for the person who keeps all of the laws except one is as guilty as a person who has broken all of God's law. Okay. So again, Moses prior to Jesus in the physical realm. If we know and understand certain references in the Bible, like Sodom and Gomorrah, homosexuality, rape, stuff like that, right? Um, it would be physically impossible. And this is where I'm getting to my point for anybody to live the perfect life in accordance with the law of Moses. That is why Jesus was sent to earth to start his ministry, live the perfect life. Because it's clear as day in the Bible that a lot of people were not living in accordance to the law of Moses. So Jesus lived the perfect life in every accord in reference to the law of Moses so that we didn't have to, right? There was already homosexuality. There was already murder. There was already kidnapping. There was already fornication. It's even mentioned in the Bible. Fornication, all these things that people were just kind of doing on their own and not living righteously in accordance to God's word. Okay? So one of the purposes of Jesus being on earth is to fulfill the law of Moses because we were unable to do it, right? Even though we were commanded to, we were given the free will to decide to walk with Jesus, to decide to live right by God. And there was people on earth that simply just were not doing that. Okay? So, Sheikh Uthman is trying to be deceitful in saying that, look, this is what your Bible says and you're okay with this? Well, yeah, because there's a standard in which they were supposed to uphold, but they didn't, making them sinners, making them living away from God, against God's word, living unrighteously. We know this. Okay? But let's go over to what the Quran says. Chapter 4, verse 24. And also forbidden to you are all married women, except those women whom your right hands have come to possess, in parentheses, as a result of war. Okay? Just so nobody can say, oh, you're just reading whatever. Straight from Quran.com. Except with their wives of those bond women in their possession. The definition of bond woman, a female bond servant or slave. Now, if we go over to answering Islam, chapter 33, verse 50. Prophet, we have made lawful to you the wives to whom you have granted dowries and the slave girls whom God has given you as booty. This verse clearly shows that Muslims believe that taking slaves in war was a God-given right. These slaves were considered booty or the spoils of war, as the saying goes, to the victors go the spoils. Chapter 23, verse 5. Except with their wives and slave girls, for these are lawful to them. Hmm. If you read down a little more, the Quran also instructs Muslims not to force their female slaves into prostitution, chapter 24, verse 34, and even allows Muslims to marry slaves if they so desire, chapter 4, verse 24. 
and to free them at times as a penalty for crime or sin. Chapter 4, verse 92, chapter 5, verse 89, chapter 58, verse 3, and even allows slaves to buy their liberty if they meet certain if they meet certain of their master's conditions, chapter 24, verse 33. Chapter 90, verse 10. Freeing of a bondsman refers to Muslims ransoming other Muslims who are slaves of non-Muslims. Now, if we go to volume 7, number 137. Now, these are all, to my understanding, these are all Muslim scholars. We got female cap captives in the war booty, and we used to do coitus, coitus inter, uh, interrupt us with them. Sorry, I'm struggling with that. So we asked Allah's messenger about it, and he said, do you really do that? Repeating the question, there is no soul that is destined to exist but will come into existence till the day of resurrection, okay? So basically, what's going on here is Sheikh Uthman is insinuating that the Bible is morally incorrect. Even though we've already prefaced the moralities in which people were allowed to have slaves as property. We've established the law of Moses came before Jesus' physical presence on earth. We've already established what Jesus did in the physical presence on earth. He fulfilled the law of Moses because we were incapable of doing it. We are inferior to God, hence why Jesus is God, because he lived the perfect life, amongst other things. Not only that, the Quran clearly allows prisoners of war, slaves from as war, you know, war captives turn slaves. So it's it's kind of crazy to me, and I, I have a response to this, uh, you know, to this comment. And he who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. So if we go to the comment section, look. Whoever curses his father or his mother shall be put to death. Curses means to dishonor. Any way, shape, or form of dishonor. Exodus 21, 18 through 20. No different in modern day when you hurt someone, you pay for it. If you don't, then nothing happens. If you Meaning, if you don't hurt somebody, nothing happens. Exodus 20, 21. If a slave owner killed his slave unwarranted, he could then be killed himself. If the slave died days after, it is assumed he did not die as a result of the fight. Either way, repercussions were to be had in either scenario that fit the crime. Stop taking the Bible out of context, especially when the surah says to uphold it word for word because it is the true revelation of God. And I gave the reference. So you're, he's, he's misquoting the Bible quoting the Bible, trying to, attempting to. He does, but he takes it out of context. And he's insinuating that it is morally incorrect when we just read that in Islam, not only do they take slaves, war captives, they marry the wives of the men, force themselves upon them, possibly impregnate them, whatever, whatever, you know, may happen from that. So if we're going off the moral basis, 
I mean, the, the Bible is pretty cut and clear. If you do wrong to your slaves, the Bible tells us the slaves were to be treated as brothers in Christ. And if they were treated any other way, you would deal with the repercussions from that. So it's it's completely immoral to do what he's doing, to confuse this guy and then try to say that you know, insinuating the Bible is immoral. Why do you believe in this? Yet his own books say it as well. And these are, you know, Muslim scholars. This is Sam Shamoon's website. Um, but these are all, you know, from my understanding, 14th century Muslim scholars who are translating the meanings of these passages in the Quran. And, you know, the uh, the supplemental books of the Quran. But, I mean, come on, man. It's like, you're trying to trip this guy up. And momentarily it worked, you know. This guy did fairly decent, you know, correcting him. But at the same time, it's like, bro, you can't do that. You know, if we misquote the Bible, I mean, excuse me, if we misquote the Quran or anything like that, you know, they're coming for our heads and then we're the hypocrites and we're, we're in the wrong because, you know, the Bible tells us to earnest, earnestly contend for our faith. What does that look like? You know, if you're sitting here attacking the Bible and you just expect us to sit down and take it, no. Just as clear as the Bible is on how to treat slaves and captives and stuff like that. It also tells us earnestly contend for the faith. I mean, it's it's as simple as that. Um, but you know, we could we could go into more detail. Um, this is gonna be it for now. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, leave them down in the comments. I'm still trying to get my audio situation figured out. Um, but yeah, so we'll uh we'll probably circle back on this. I'm sure there's gonna be uh more people responding. To my comment at some point uh, but yeah let's let's i want to see what i originally said the first guy knew where this was going and bailed it's easy to proofread the bible if he read the entire verse before and after included he would have read the avenging part the healing part the paying back part but he didn't because it would drastically go against the i meant to say rhetoric He's trying to push. You guys are honestly so weird. Yeah, honestly, I mean, I kind of stand by that. It's extremely weird to try and sit here and say the Bible says something that it doesn't. Um, and then cry wolf, you know, when somebody rebuttals it. So, oh yeah, I responded to this guy earlier. So he said, oh, no way. Okay, send the verses so we can know what part of the Bible it is and we can read for ourselves, which... I hope you do. I really do. Do I think you will? Probably not. But I, I genuinely, I really hope you do because this is, it's its not cool. It's really not cool. You people are big hypocrites and you know it. And why didn't the guy tell him and say, read the verse before and after that? You will see the truth in due course. I don't know why he didn't tell him to read in context. You know, I've been in these situations where Somebody's so stern on what something says, they don't even give you a chance to kind of rebuttal. And he, Sheikh Uthman does it all the time. Um, and then I said, first of all, Jesus came after Moses. Secondly, Jesus fulfilled the law of Moses, so we didn't have to. The Bible tells us if we show partiality in one part of the law, which I already showed, then we show partiality in all parts of the law. And unless you're as perfect as Jesus, not a single person other than Jesus could live the perfect life for us. If you actually read through the comments I posted and I if you actually read through the comments I posted an entire breakdown proving this goofball wrong because he's just being a goofball at this point. I mean, there's no other way to go about it. And I don't mean that to degrade him or anything like that, but it's if you flip the roles and I'm out here doing this to his people, um, you know, because he sets up a booth and he has a group of people with him and whatnot. I don't know if he was by himself at this moment, but from what I've seen, 
He has a group of people with him. And anytime somebody tries to question the Quran, he gets all upset about it. You want to talk about hypocrite, though. Your own prophet Muhammad had slaves for himself. See, this is where we can keep going. Not only that, Muhammad had 12 wives. While it was haram for anyone else to have more than four. If you'd like to keep going, I'll gladly destroy your self-proclaimed prophet, which I'll do it in the most loving way I possibly can. You know, if you're going to come for the Bible in a malicious way, I can't say necessarily that I'm going to come back in a malicious way because I, I, I don't, you know, I don't think I will. But from a factual standpoint, I mean, you can go see for yourselves. Muhammad had 12 wives, one of which Aisha, who was a minor, prepubescent is the, the biblical term or the the Quranical term, I guess. Um, and Muhammad also had slaves, like non-Muslim slaves. And to my understanding, it was partially because they were non-Muslim as to why he took them in as slaves. Uh, so we can go tick for tack all day. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's not cool how he pushes these messages. It's not cool um, how he only proofreads the Bible because if we proofread the Quran, it's going to be a problem. Now, I, I want to make it known that I want, I want this to be a substance-filled conversation. If you want to talk about it, we can talk about it. If you don't, then you don't. I mean, but, you know, Lord willing, you, you come to the truth, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, believe wholeheartedly in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and truly believe and understand that he lived the perfect life. He bore all of our sins, so we didn't have to. He paid the ultimate price, so we didn't have to. That's all I got. I'm going to leave it at that. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, put them down in the comment section. I'll respond to them you know, as I can. And um, I hope this video finds you well. I hope you guys are in good spirits. Whatever side you're on, I'm open to cordial discussion. Um, but, but please do it factually. Please do it respectfully. I'll do my best to not disrespect you in a malicious way. If it's if scripture makes you feel some type of way, it's not my words, it's God's words. And, you know, we can we can talk about it. So, yeah, share this video if you'd like. Leave a comment. Um, and, yeah, just let me know where you're at. Uh, if you want any prayers, anything like that, let me know. We can, you know, we can do a group prayer, anything like that. Um, so, yeah, hope you guys have a good day. Hope you enjoyed this. And let me know what you think.